Hey, greetings out there. It's Dave Duford again from Final Expense Agent Mentor at FBAgentMentor.com. Today I'm going to talk about a topic that I'm hoping is not going to be removed by YouTube or possibly flagged or complained about. I know what I'm about to talk about is going to ruffle some feathers, piss off some people, but hey, I don't care because I'm going to talk about underwriting practices of the company named after an American president that's well known in the insurance business. Not going to give you specific names, but hey, if you got a half a brain, you know what I'm talking about. And maybe it's President Washington. I don't know. You'll have to think about it. Anyways, um, I say this is controversial because, first of all, this particular company wants their agents to drink the Kool Aid, that they're the only game in town, and that their pricing, albeit the highest in the industry, they justify it that that's a good thing. Uh, you know, Jim Jones crazy stuff. Uh, you know, stupid. So, what you have to realize is that in the final expense business, I say this in a lot of my training videos, is that underwriting is crucial. And that's the main reason I'm a broker, why I represent different companies. Not because I just don't like the idea of doing a one company show. I, I would if I could get all my clients with it and make my life easier. But in order to be effective, sell a lot of insurance, make a lot of money, you got to carry about 10 to 15 companies as you become an advanced agent. The one problem with one company is exemplified with this company named after American President. You see, their particular product only looks back several years on all conditions and it knocks out very common conditions you can get elsewhere. Take for example, I had a lady in, oh what was that town, Dahlonega, Georgia. I did a seminar there and she had just gotten a plan from this company named after an American President over the phone. Uh, it was a two year wait about 40 bucks a month for a $2,000 plan. It was ridiculously priced. She was like in her 50s. And so I said, well, look, let me ask you some questions. We'll see what I can do. I don't know if I can help, but I can tell you the truth either way. If it's good, keep it. If it's not, then I'll show you what I can do. Turns out she just had COPD. That was it. That was all. And um, this particular company looks at COPD and says, look, not going to take you. Sorry, you have COPD. It's a two-year wait. You've got to pay two years before you fully cover well, that's no good, man. I mean, what if she dies in the first two years? You know, she wasn't like on oxygen in a nursing home. It was manageable. Bad disease, yeah, but manageable. Bottom line, I got her plan, the company called Americo. Americo has the best rates for smokers who are, um, have COPD. So I wrote that up, saved her some money, and she had enough. She was happy, and bada bing, bada boom, that company named after American president was gone. So that's what happens, you know, it's not just the pricing that makes this company lose a lot of business. It is also the underwriting. You force feed crappy products on your customers, you're going to lose people because there's people like me, you know, schmucks who come in and say, hey, yeah, you're only, you got no coverage. Did that guy tell you? No, half the time they don't because the agent's embarrassed of, of, of basically having inadequacies. And now you can come in and replace it. It's great. It's beautiful. So. You know, the deal is, is that this is what you do when you sign up with a company that is captive, that only offers a minimal kind of coverage. And the thing you've got to be careful of is that it, it costs you tremendously, okay? They also have a new prescription check. It used to be this particular company did not check medical information nor prescription, so you could get all sorts of crap through them. They never would check it until they croaked within the two years. But they tightened up on health. And so what happens now is they're actually rating up for certain heart medications that are usually pretty simple to cover for. So my point is, is that, look, if you, if, if you see these guys out in the field, get excited because a lot of times they're easy to replace, not just on price, but on underwriting. And more importantly for you guys that are new to this business, this is an exemplary situation where you never want to use one company and be uh, chained to the desk of one company. You lose business. You, you, you overcharge people and you end up failing because you're with a crappy group of people who uh, don't care so much about the clients, they just want to make as much money and the managers want to take it all when you decide to leave within the first two years. I'll leave that for another video, it's called Final Expense Scams. In the meantime, if you like my video, make sure you like it, thumbs it up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, check the links out at the bottom for a lot more information on the company named after a president. Other final expense scams you should avoid. My name is Dave Duford at Final Expense Agent Mentor. Thanks for listening.